Hello Internet, Big Dave here, and I would like to welcome you to the Roundup for the year ending on Saturday, December 31st. That's right, this is the Year End Roundup. We're going to talk a little bit about 2011, we'll talk about the six months or so that Big Dave is Cheap has been in existence, and then I'll give you two quick top five lists. It's going to be the top five games that I enjoyed playing for you guys here on Big Dave is Cheap, and the top five games that I enjoyed playing outside of Big Dave is Cheap. These games may or may not have been released in 2011, right? Give me a break. I'm a cheap guy. I don't always get to buy the new game right when it comes out. It's just going to be games that I have purchased and played in 2011, whether it be for you guys on video or for myself in private. So let's start things off by talking a little bit about 2011. The year started out in a fairly interesting fashion for me. I decided in uh, January, while participating in the Rift Beta, that I was going to make a website, and uh, sort of a bloggy website, you know, where I would discuss my weighty thoughts about the, the game Rift. And uh, along with that, I decided to do YouTube videos. So uh, I secured the domain talesoftalara.com, secured the YouTube name talesoftalara.com, and I went ahead and made it happen. I made a series of YouTube videos about common questions that were being encountered during the beta of Rift, and then my life changed a little bit. I suddenly started to get tired. Now, I'm a big fat dude, so, you know, we get tired when we do physical things. But this was a little something more. I started to get tired going up the stairs in my house, and that's not something that usually tired me out before. Then after that, I started to get tired walking in from the car. And finally, I was getting tired just packing up my stuff to leave for the day from work. And at that point, I decided I really, really should go to the doctor, so uh, off to the emergency room I went, where I was diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism. If you don't know what that is, Serena Williams had one around the same time, the uh, curvaceous tennis player and uh, basically it is a blood clot that gets into your lungs it therefore blocks the blood flow into your lungs so that your blood doesn't pick up the oxygen it needs it also causes a lot of problems with your heart because your heart is pumping blood or trying to pump blood into your lungs and it can't do that because of the blockage so my heart was swollen and my lungs and, and uh, blood were lacking in oxygen and I went into the hospital for about a month I came out of the hospital in March, uh, late March, and after that I decided, you know what, I'm just going to kind of have some fun with life. Um, pulmonary embolisms are very often fatal, especially in older folks. Uh, luckily I was young enough and, and I suppose healthy enough to survive it. And uh, I decided I'm going to do some things that I want to do, and one of the things I had been wanting to do for a while was to create a variety gaming channel on YouTube where I played games uh, that were maybe a little bit under the radar, uh, cheaper titles, not your uh, your heavy hitters, not your uh, your modern warfares and and you know all of the games that uh, that folks seem to really be playing and, and putting out into the forefront. So uh, inspired, as I've said before, in part by Total Biscuit and uh, other independent gamers, I decided to uh, open up Big Dave is Cheap and uh, put that into motion in, oh, let's say May of 2011. Started working on videos in June and then finally opened the channel in late June or early July of 2011. I did a lot of videos initially releasing uh, five the first week and three or four the next week. Had a lot of fun doing it. Did a free-to-play FPS special that uh, still to this day is my, uh, my biggest viewed set of videos. And uh, that's pretty much the journey that we went through. Uh, after that, we find ourselves here after six or so months of making uh, videos that I've had a blast doing. All these videos have been a whole lot of fun. I've enjoyed the time uh, with you guys. Dabbled over there on TGN, enjoyed that a whole lot. Uh, just didn't uh, didn't particularly particularly mesh with the direction that TGN was going in. So I'm back here in my own little corner of the internet, and uh, I am happy. So uh, that's a pretty quick synopsis of 2011 as it was, as it is, and as it will be remembered. So. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this little segment, this little uh, trip down memory lane. Let's head over to these top top five lists. I, I keep wanting to say top ten lists because everybody does a top ten list, but I'm doing two top fives. So uh, here we go. Let's start out with the first top five list, and that is the top five games that I played for you here on Big Dave is Cheap.
At number five, we have Scorgasm. Scorgasm was one of those games that I played this year, picked it up in a, in a bundle pack, and didn't really expect much of it. When I played it, I have to say it was probably my favorite dual stick shooter that I have ever played. And that's saying a lot. I've, I've played quite a lot of dual stick shooters in the last six months or so. And uh, the thing I really, really liked about the way that this game was designed was that I always felt in control. I always felt like no matter how insane uh, a particular wave of enemies looked or a particular situation looked, I always felt like I had the, 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 the means to overcome that, that I had the control necessary and I had the weaponry necessary and uh, I never felt like I was off the rails. And, and other shooters that I played this year, Arcadia, uh, something like Beat Hazard, some of those shooters, with those games I was simply waiting until the game got so difficult that I could no longer cope. Uh, you know, I was waiting till the game got so difficult that I, that one mistake meant my end. And with Scorgasm, I never felt that way. And I think that's a really unique thing, that he managed to create difficulty levels that actually challenged you instead of just feeling like overwhelming waves of enemies were going to come at you and one mistake was going to mean your end. Um, I, I really, really admire that about the way that, uh, that that game was built from the ground up, and that's why it's my number five game. At number four, we've got Frozen Bites masterpiece, Trine. Trine is the amazing puzzle platformer where you switch between three distinctively different characters in order to try and conquer the puzzles in each and every level. The thing that I really like about the video that I made for Trine is that I've had a couple of different people tell me that it introduced them to this game, and this game went on to become one of their favorite games. And that really, really showed me the power of what I'm doing here. Not to, not to get a big head about it or to think that I'm any sort of grand person. Again, I try to keep a realistic uh, image of myself. You know, a hundred and something people watch my videos on YouTube, and uh, most of the time less than that. But, uh, you know, it was really, really nice to hear that several people watched that video and liked my impression of it enough to actually give it a try and then found out that they love the game too. Trine 2 is currently out and I'm itching to get that. I'm just waiting for a really good sale on it. So uh, Trine is at number four. Number three is Darksiders. Yes, Darksiders was the subject of my first giveaway. I put a little pomp and circumstance into the giving away of that title, uh, but that meant that I got a lot of opportunities to play it when I made those little videos. And in fact, Darksiders is one of the games that I went on to play quite a bit after actually filming it for you guys. Uh, I really enjoyed Darksiders, and I do have to say, uh, while, I, while I really like the game, I really hate the video that I made for Darksiders because I played through the introduction level and I really don't feel that I did the, the game justice. So if there's any video I wish I could take back or redo on Big Dave is Cheap from this year, it's definitely the video for Darksiders. And so while I really, really enjoyed the game and I enjoyed spreading the word about Darksiders, and I think a lot of you guys did uh, find Darksiders on sale and try it after seeing the video on it, I think the video itself was actually uh, doing a disservice to the game because it only showed the introduction and it didn't show a lot of the complex systems that are introduced into the game later. So my initial impression of the game was it's a simplistic third person hack and slash when in fact it's so much more. So I really really love Darksiders and really kind of hate the video that I made for it. At number two, it's Runic Games' little masterpiece, Torchlight. I absolutely love Torchlight, and it really brought back a lot of memories for me of my days playing Diablo very early on in my gaming life. I hope you guys also played Torchlight. It was one of those games that was just so talked about over the last couple of years, and it has been a source of constant joy for me. Anytime I fire it up and play it, I am taken back to a... Uh, an age before things were so complicated, before the Oblivions and the Skyrims, before you had so much detail and so many things to do in the world. Just crawl the dungeon, collect the loot, kill the stuff, go back to town, drop it off, do it all over again. And Torchlight, because it had many of the developers from the first two Diablo games, did such a good job of bringing that to a modern audience. So I hope you guys enjoyed Torchlight as much as I did. It was definitely one of my favorite games of the year. And at number one, it is Night Sky. That shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who's been paying attention to the channel. I've been raving about Night Sky for a little while now. 
and I am absolutely in love with this game. I've played all the way through the standard mode, and I am playing through the alternate difficulty now, and I just really enjoy this game every single time I boot it up. It's been a constant source of frustration, but also of fun. It's been a source of triumph and tragedy for me, and, and I've really, really enjoyed every minute that I've put into this game, even the frustrating ones. So, Night Sky is my favorite game this year that I played for you in video form on Big Dave is Cheap. So those were the top five videos that I enjoyed playing for you guys, but now let's talk about the top five videos that I enjoy playing outside of the channel in my own private time. There's a couple in here that have been featured in some way or another on the channel, but in the end, these are the games that I play when I have nothing to do, no videos to record, and I just want to have fun. Number five is sort of a bit of a tie. It's Rift and Star Wars The Old Republic, my MMOs of choice. So these two games take up a good amount of my free time, and both of them were released in 2011. I really enjoy them. Of course I have Tales of Talara, which is my Rift dedicated channel where I post uh, Warfronts, my PvP series, as well as some other things randomly. But I've really enjoyed Rift, and I've really enjoyed Star Wars The Old Republic. I hope you guys have given either one of these games a chance, and if you have, tell me what you think of them. I do enjoy MMOs, and MMOs are part of the reason that I'm such a cheap gamer, because after I pay those bills every month, I got nothing left to spend on games, but maybe a fiver here and there. So my MMOs of choice are number five. Number four is Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Yeah, I know, I put some Space Marine videos here on the channel, but strictly speaking, this game was never intended to be featured on Big Dave is Cheap. All the episodes were supposed to go on TGN, but some of them made their way here, and you guys know the reasons why. So, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine stands as one of those games that is unique in my gaming life. It is one of only one or two other games that have ever been so interesting to me that I actually put in the effort to learn about the lore behind the universe of the game. Uh, the biggest one previously would have been uh, Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft uh, that got me into the Warcraft lore, but uh, this game has definitely stood as one of those games that got me interested in the world in which the game takes place. So, of course, the game itself I had a blast with. Uh, yes, it has its faults. Yes, it is a little bit linear. Yes, it is somewhat derivative of, of previous third-person shooters, but all in all, the game is a wonderful time. You guys know that I had a lot of fun playing it, and uh, I hope that some of you have picked it up recently in some of the sales that have been going on because it has been deeply, deeply discounted. So at number four, yes indeed, it is Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Number three is Sanctum. Sanctum is a game that I've talked a lot about, but I've just never managed to make a video for it. I love Sanctum's take on tower defense. I love the ability to be actively involved in the defense, to be able to buff my weapons to such a degree that I'm able to be a participant in the action, I'm able to do as much damage that I, as I want to do, and I'm able to depend on my towers as much as I want to depend on my towers. This is definitely a departure from some of your general uh, overhead tower defense games where everything's out of your hands. It's all about how well you build your labyrinth of death. But in this case, you can compensate for some of your weaknesses in your defenses by using your own weaponry, and that is fantastic. I really love the first-person take, and I really, really enjoyed this game every single time I played it, including the times that I played it in multiplayer, and uh, that has been a very interesting fold that's been added into this title. Sanctum is an amazing game. I hope you picked it up, and it stands as my number three game that I played this year that I really, really enjoyed. At number two, it's Orcs Must Die. It's a rather late addition to my collection this year. I've only had it for a few weeks, but it's quickly become one of my favorite games. Uh, there was kind of a toss-up here between Orcs Must Die and Dungeon Defenders, and the reason I went with Orcs Must Die is because it's a little bit more of a pure experience. I find myself not really able to play Dungeon Defenders without a group, and uh, Orcs Must Die, I can fire it up and I can play it at any point. Both of those games are also somewhat similar to Sanctum in that they're in sort of the same subgenre of, uh, of tower defense, but Orcs Must Die's take on the tower defense genre is a breath of fresh air, the trap system, the way that everything works, and something that really shocked me about Orcs Must Die is that it brought out my competitive streak. 
looking at the Steam leaderboards, looking at my friends and how they scored on a level, I can say I've not completed this game yet because I keep obsessing over trying to figure out the perfect trap combinations to beat the scores of my Steam friends. And uh, I will say, Light Jimmy, I'm going to beat your score on Hallway. I don't know how you got those extra 4,000 points, but I'm going to close the gap and I'm going to make it happen. So beware, guy. I'm coming for you and I'm going to beat you. 35,000, 36,000. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be more than your score. So next time you get some free time, you better sit down and do it again and pad your hallway score because I'm coming for you, man. And the rest of you out there who are on top of me on other levels, watch out because I am obsessed right now with beating your high scores. So this is a streak in myself that I, I really haven't seen in a long time. I'm not really all that competitive, but suddenly I have found myself uh, willing to compete with you guys over top scores in Orcs Must Die. So uh, that is why Orcs Must Die is my number two game of the year. And at number one, yes, I'm going to go trendy, it is Bastion. The game that seems to uh, be universally loved by everyone. Uh, Bastion has been, oh, just a magnificent game. It has retro elements, it has new elements, it, it, it uses a, a platform uh, like the, the Zelda-style adventure game, uh, that isometric adventure game, to build an amazing story. Uh, it, it evokes emotion. You, you feel for the character, you feel for the world, and I think Total Biscuit, when he was talking about Bastion as his number one game, kind of said something that was, uh, that, that sort of hit me in that, you know, you, this isn't your character. You're playing this guy. It's not like a Skyrim or something where you've made your character and you're invested in your character, but even though you're not playing a character that you've built from the ground up, you're still invested in him and in his world, and that leads to some emotional content during the story, and uh, Bastion is just amazing. The narrator, the way the world falls into place, I mean, you know, I, I can't say enough things about the... Uh, enough good things about some of those decisions that they made that, that may have seemed iffy. I mean, the reason you haven't seen this game featured on my channel is because of the narration. I don't want to talk over the narrator because he's so awesome. So I don't want to play the game in video format because I feel like I'd be spoiling the actual experience of the game. So you'll never see a Bastion video from me or a Let's Play or something. I mean, you'll see it here on this list and I'll tell you that it's awesome and that I love it, but I wouldn't spoil the game by trying to talk over or between the narrator. And uh, I really, really love this game, and I hope that you have all played this game by now. Of course, it's released on Xbox Live Arcade first and later came to the PC. I can't say enough things about this game. People can argue whether it's technically indie or not. I don't really care. It's an amazing title, and I have had nothing but fun when it comes to Bastion. And those are the five games that I enjoyed playing in 2011 outside of the glare of the bright lights and cameras of Big Dave is Cheap. So I hope everybody enjoyed that. Of course, the disclaimers do apply. Those games were not necessarily all released in 2011, and they also are not the best of the best, as decided by you, the voter, or anything like that. It's just the five games that I liked playing for you, and the five games that I liked playing in my spare time. It's 100% subjective, it's an opinion, and I would love to hear your five. So if you guys have a, five, a top five list or a top ten list, if you've made a video, or if you have an article you've written on your blog, or if you just like to make a quick and dirty list right here in the comments section, please share your favorite games of the year with me. I would absolutely love to read it. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we're going to do as we go forward this year in Big Dave is Cheap. Now, I've talked a lot about some of this stuff, and I know it, it oftentimes must seem like this stuff's never going to happen because I say, oh, I'm probably going to do this, or I'm going to try to do that, and then it never happens. So uh, these are the things that I'm definitely going to be planning to do, definitely going to be planning to do. No, these are the things that I am planning to do in the first two months of the new year. Number one, and this is probably going to be in the next couple of weeks. I already have the, the basic outline and stuff ready to go for this. I'm going to do the challenge series. We're going to start out with Super Crate Box, and uh, I'm going to set a high score. There's going to be some basic uh, rules that you guys have to adhere to, and then after that, I'm going to challenge you guys to uh, beat my score, and at the end of that, we'll probably throw out some kind of prize. Uh, we'll let that go a couple of months. Uh, you know, So long as it stays active, uh, we'll let it go. And uh, once it dies down and, and people kind of stop posting, uh, we'll, we'll crown a winner and uh, we will uh, we'll move on to the next game. We'll try to keep the games free and, uh, and score driven so that we can all just have a good time uh, with some friendly competition. So that's definitely the number one thing. The next thing I want to do 
is my uh, my retro gaming series, my uh, retro roulette, which I've told you guys about several times in the past. You know, that show was pretty much ready to go for TGN. I had a few little uh, transitions and things I wanted to finish up for it, but I did a lot of graphics because all of these games are, are going to be 4x3 aspect ratio. None of them really work stretched out. They all look wonky when you stretch them out, these old retro games. So I had to do some graphics and some, uh, some mats and things for the actual presentation, you know, develop the logo and some different stuff like that. Uh, so I was really trying to make it a full-on, uh, well-produced show, and a lot of that stuff's going to transition. Some of it's going to go, uh, go out the door. But basically the idea would be just to uh, bring the production values down a little bit so that the show can be more easily produced every week for you guys. And um, the main reason that I want to pursue this show and that I want to do it is because these are the games that lay the foundation that modern indie games are standing on. Um, all of these old platformers and uh, even old racing games and all these things, they all they all put down the, the foundation that, that modern independent games stand on. And, and I really... I really want to expose that foundation to you guys so that a lot of you folks who haven't seen or played a lot of these games get an opportunity to see that. And those of you who have played some of those games, maybe get an opportunity to highlight a game that you really love that you felt didn't get a lot of uh, a lot of attention. A quick rundown of how the show is going to go is each week it's going to be a random selection from a list that is um, that is maintained by you guys. So you guys are going to give me the games that go on the list and every week I'm going to pick a random game. Um, once the game is picked I'm going to do research on the game so that I've got a lot of information about the game as well as my personal thoughts on the game and uh, we'll run through some levels in the game. We'll play a little bit of the game and I'll try to highlight for you why the game was important, um, was the game something that I ever played, was it important in my life, and uh, how I feel about it as I play it now as, as a modern gamer. So uh, that's kind of the idea behind the show. There will be a random aspect to it that is, uh, that is curated by the community, and then it will be a, uh, a sort of a presentation. You know, let's give a certain amount of honor to these games and, and put them in the position of honor that they sort of deserve and uh, show why, um, why they are classics. And uh, that's what I really hope to do with that show. So those are the two things that I'm really looking forward to doing, the score challenge uh, and retro roulette. I think I'm going to call the score challenge free-for-all just because that kind of has the right connotation. Um, and I do like to name things on this channel for whatever reason. I don't know why everything has to have a name, but everything does. So uh, those are the things I'm planning to do in the new year, along with continuing to make more and more videos. Of course, I've emptied my wallet and filled up my hard drive with games during the Steam holiday sale. So you guys will have, uh, I, I will have a lot of uh, fodder for, for videos for you guys. So uh, look forward to it. We're going to continue on the schedule that we have right now. That is uh, two videos a week plus the roundup. Uh, so that's what I'm going to continue to try to push out for you guys. That may change a little bit when Retro Roulette actually gets into the rotation as a full-blown show. Not really sure. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Sorry to uh, bend your ear for so long, but I do appreciate you listening, and uh, I hope you guys have a happy new year, and I look forward to uh, the next 12 months here on Big Dave is Cheap. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.